Big news on the electronic music front, a bit of backlash online um, due to this um, new uh, government fund or grant that the UK government has been doling out to certain nightlife establishments. Of course, as you guys know, COVID has essentially decimated the nightlife industry, cultural industries, because, you know, they are necessarily, they're kind of the perfect breeding ground in theory for an airborne virus. People congregating in large groups, closely packed in together in places that aren't the most uh, well insulated so that will definitely make the virus spread if you believe that kind of way of thing so it made complete sense when the government decided to kind of look all those places down and essentially ban us from partying or from enjoying any kind of culture at a mass level that's essentially negatively affected these establishments because they have no way of bringing in money through the door which is i guess how most of these platforms or most of these places establishments survive so um various people in the industry were pushing for some sort of government grant but then off the back of this push for a government grant we've got a whole other issue that's kind of spawned off of it which is this um weird allocation of grants and this kind of uh, disparity i guess in the places that have received them and the places that haven't received them and again in the amounts the people that have backed it loads of stuff going on i'm going to go through a bit of it now the first one to kind of highlight is obviously resident advisor um they received uh how much did they receive here resident advisor da, 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 received seven hundred and fifty thousand, right um from the grant this is a statement here from ra it said ra receives an arts council england culture recovery grant a statement here by the co-founder nick saban so a lot of people had issues with um resident advisor getting this grant because i guess a lot of their um, employees are i guess freelancing by you know the general sense of term they maybe have some um full-time people there people mostly see them as a publishing platform but they obviously have the arm of ticketing and they obviously from some events here and there but if people thought i guess the grant amount that they got was a you know a little bit too inflated for what they do for the culture but let's read through their statement and i'll give you my side of the opinion so the statement from nick saban goes as follows as an independent cultural interest organization we are incredibly relieved to be awarded this funding like everyone in the culture sector the pandemic has decimated our business model we've experienced a 95 percent loss of revenue and expect our meaningful recovery for at least next six months which is you know i guess something that a lot of people can probably attest to we're an independent company with no external investors or corporate backing which is a very important note so this seven hundred fifty thousand pound grant is a lifeline for us it will cover approximately 30 percent of our business until april 2021 which is still not a long time uh, it is therefore essential to be survival of ra's organization following the covid um forced redundancies we have 56 permanent members of staff spanning writers editors designers filmmakers web developers and promoter support and more most of whom have been working reduced hours 75 percent of the grant will go towards retaining jobs and avoiding making further redundancies and the remaining 25 will support our network of creative freelancers whose income has been wiped out during this pandemic and also ensure we can maintain our standard our stated commitments to support the critical important causes we exist as an organization to support the electronic music scene um while we are deeply grateful to receive this lifeline this is not a moment of celebration the events caused by the pandemic continue to have a direct consequence on the hundreds of thousand people who give as much to keep our culture alive each and every element of the stars media ecosystem and the network of thousands of small independently run organizations and self-employed freelancers from clubs events professionals and booking agents and to artists and promoters is facing existential threat a huge number of these will not survive the next six months leaving an unimaginable hole in an already fragile environment our purpose as an organization is to help those communities receiving this grant ensure we can continue to do that we'd like to thank the arts council of england Da, 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 da. so if if we believe what they say i think we really need to kind of um, specify here that again they're an independent run company which i didn't know i thought they had some kind of investment some sort of back end. i thought they would run the same way a boiler room was run so i think some of the backlash concerning ra is a bit un unwarranted now i understand that resident advisor has a bad reputation when it comes to music reviews and features some people feel like they're on payola um how they kind of rewrite the narrative concerning different scenes how they maybe write favorable reviews to certain people and certain labels and all this other shifty stuff that you'd maybe associate with platforms such as pitfork i understand it but in terms of the brass roots of it the actual bare bones of the issue they're an independently run platform that essentially is a huge net positive i think to dance music culture in general and um, from the ticket aspect of it for the events um obviously aspect of it and again the 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 part of it where they highlight and promote various djs on various levels of the totem pole right we have this three tiers i'd like to call it where it's like the uh beginner sort of like the bottom tier which i sort of occupy and then the middle tier and then of course the top tier 
and they kind of cover all those DJs. They give them a platform on their RA podcasts, RA exchanges. They do features. Um, they do the obviously the poll previously was a good um, um, a tool in terms of promoting local DJs and getting people to kind of you know recognize other artists that they want to follow, especially outside of the top twenty. There's a lot of interesting picks out there of people that actually went to the events, various people that they actually went to go see. They've done a lot more positive to the scene. I think they've done negative, and I think if they if everything they're saying in the statement is true and they're going to make sure they allocate the majority of those funds that they got the synergy fifty thousand to ensuring that they don't have to sack more people during this hard time it's a net bet it's a net positive i think most people in dance music have probably shifted and pivoted to other industries or got other jobs because essentially that entire scene is dead until we have a vaccine for the most part right most insurance companies are won't won't be uh won't want to be liable to put on an event during covid with no um vaccine in place or no um possibility of you know rapid testing which is going to cost promoters and organizers hundreds of thousands if not millions of pounds to get that done so unless it's a virus electronic music and dance culture nightlife culture is done for the most part right it's on a sort of uh, pause extended pause until that happens so most people have probably lost their jobs especially if you're working um, behind the scenes right in the back offices of this industry um, you kind of keep things going I'm sure bartenders barback security guards um, agents booking agents um, event managers tour managers have had their jobs and their income completely decimated so if one platform in this dance and music scene is able to keep people in their jobs and not have them go out and try and look for another vocation when this is the only thing that they wanted to do their entire life they have to be committed by it again the aspect of the event side of thing I understand the reservations cool they are they're, they're mostly an event ticketing platform and publishing platform that completely understandable but no one can deny that they've completely revolutionized and changed the way um events are ticketed and run you can me myself as a small promoter putting on events for 150 people in a nightclub somewhere i can essentially hand over the entire mechanics of making sure tickets are allocated to people at a certain time they're, they're given obviously and, and put in a digital format in terms of an apple wallet a pass key that you can then scan at the front of your door they've been designing an entire e ecosystem that can run completely on their platform right and it take a minuscule amount of money um i think they're taking i don't sure they actually have only run free tickets i'm not sure how much they actually take from the things that you charge but i'm pretty sure it's minuscule from um when it kind of considered the amount of mechanics that go into making sure that runs smoothly and so far from using ra tickets i've never run into an issue ra events have been a lifesaver for me going to different cities especially cities where i'm not necessarily familiar with the clubbing landscape to go i'll be able to go on to ra and see a list of events going on um um, in that city that you're in to be able to um, click on the artists who are playing on that lineup go and look at their profiles because it's the main profile i go to essentially the dance music version of imbd you can go and visit different djs see where their promotional items are listen to a couple of their mixes back them and support them in the stuff that they're making it's a definitely a great portal now of course the other side of things that i'm kind of annoyed by is the fact that they removed the comments i think that that necessarily has maybe negated a lot of the good influence that they've had on the scene because they are just now now a publishing and review platform and an events and ticketing platform the aspect of community is completely eviscerated without the inclusion of the, of the comments which has essentially come to bite them in the ass because i think the comment side of things and the community that that festered especially for myself that was firstly my basically first introduction to the kind of electronic music scene before i actually went to an event being able to read the comments do my homework research on some people that i mentioned uh, dig deep into topics you know um you know have some friendly debates on certain issues that was essentially where i kind kind of had my first um, introduction into the community so taking that away hasn't necessarily negated the whole reason why i'd go on the platform which is why i rarely visit ra now day to day unless i'm going out and i want to check the listings i don't actually read anything on there because part of the part of the learning was them putting up a feature about a certain artist or somebody or featuring a different sort of scene and imagine if they feature they highlight the bristol scene on ra and then the comments were where you were got where it was where you were able to get actual comments from people that are actually in that community saying hey they missed out this person you should also look at that story you, should you got all these really cool recommendations just that were kind of generated through the one piece that they basically were able to publish or so taking that away was really harmful and again thinking about it they in my experience from what i know reading that site um you know religiously for the best part of i don't know how many years i've been reading it um it felt like they kind of removed the comments mostly based on that horrendous mama snake interview where she essentially 
decried um, the patriarchy, spoke about our own privilege without recognizing it, and just went on a completely odd tangent that, of, that of course, you know, naturally, you know, um, uh, stirred up a negative response from the readership because it's like, we want to listen to your mix. We don't want to hear all this other stuff. Like, what is this? This is bizarre. And it wasn't necessarily worded in the right way. Just a car crash of an interview. Go check out yourself, Mama Snake. She did the RA podcast. And again, the mix was pretty good. She's a really proficient DJ, but she's got obviously a lot of issues that she's dealing with. She has to kind of use the RA platform as a mouthpiece. And I'm guessing the negative reaction that she got from it essentially led to them removing the comments because they didn't like the kind of mean comments that got on the internet, which is part of course of the internet. The internet is full of wackos. It's full of odd, odd jobs that would go on there and make, and make um, random comments. But for the most part, the upvoting and downvoting of comments on RA were worked pretty well you could downvote a really offensive comment into oblivion no one had to see it anymore and if you went to check it out you could check it out and click it to kind of view it the same way you do on reddit but there was still that aspect of kind of that natural debate that was stirring up on there so the person that sort of agreed to that point of view was dave clark who's essentially been somebody who has been calling out a lot of the bs happening in the scene during um covid and what's been happening and he put out some good points and some really dubious points i'm going to read out to you and we can kind of debate on that one so uh dave clark posted on his um facebook page the following dear resident advisor you have now managed to get 750k from the arts council whilst of course the overall fund is smaller than we could have than we would have liked to have seen it is public money for culture and the artists and many people feel you should not have applied for it being primarily a ticket reseller and a paid for partnership story portal which again is a bit of a stretch i think if you're an independent platform you are allowed to have paid for partnerships with people in order to make sure people get paid right and the site keeps on running i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing um it continues you have now accepted public money which is in my mind opens up to much more intense public scrutiny so please can you answer these questions and i definitely agree i think no one's above reproach everyone should be asked the question the same goes for these business techno people right they go and do these really dubious shows they do these really dubious actions and they feel as if they're un unapproachable no one's allowed to kind of call you out or ask you a question now it's up to you whether or not you want to answer it you can tell people to go fuck themselves but people are allowed to ask you questions so the questions here are poignant but some of them are a bit of a stretch number one you came to have a vicinity of 60 staff is this primarily for your ticket reselling business and remember without clubs and festivals there'll be less tickets to sell so would you downsize naturally or is this mainly for your journalism and if it is for your journalism can you please confirm that these individuals are based in the uk if it's a uk fund after all that they're not writing paid partnership posts because that is advertising not journalism and should be self-sustained which is true that's the problem that ra has without the community without the comments all of these journalism pieces and kind of quote-unquote reviews that are necessarily that are kind of paid for by the labels are going to look at a bit are going to be looked at a bit differently now Personally, I've never read a review or, of an album or an EP on RA. I don't give a shit. Pub, uh, Pitchfork, um, the bald guy that does reviews on YouTube, I don't give a fuck what a critic has to say about anything. I look at the list of stuff's coming out, I go on record stores, and I dig like any DJ would or like any music fanatic would. I'm sure other music fanatics who aren't even DJs do the same thing I do. You go on your whatever platform that you used to stream on, you see all the new releases, you listen through stuff, you see what you like, you keep on your library, stuff you don't like, you bin, you move on. But this idea that I'm going to go on a site and read a review and that's going to inform my decision about what I'm going to buy is preposterous. But I also understand there are a segment of the population that do go and re read reviews and there are artists who look at those reviews as a opportunity for you to kind of boost your profile and to kind of gain a bit bigger audience so i understand the importance of objectivity of being able to review something without the influence of a label or payola or pressure from the higher ups is that possible in this media day and age where uh, media companies the public country companies are essentially dying they're not necessarily getting the clicks that they need so they have to sign up to paid partnerships they're essentially getting bent over a barrel to take money in order to ensure the running of their company because people aren't clicking on their on their profiles on their platform sorry is that possible i think not now the issue of having only uk staff writing on the thing is also a valid criticism if they have a lot of freelancers um of writing their articles who are based wherever they are in the globe taking public funding from the uk to pay people who don't live in the uk who aren't citizens who aren't tax paying people of the uk is very dubious it's maybe it's maybe skirting along the lines of xenophobia but there are some necessary questions to be raised there like how can you take that money to pay salaried employers who, who don't live in the uk who aren't from here you aren't necessarily supporting the scene if anything you're cutting costs by paying people who freelance in other places less money and then obviously pocketing the profits that's what 
it could be a ledge who knows number two for such a big brand your social media engagement again another big a good decent point but maybe a, um you know a stretch he says the following for such a big brand your social media engagement is woefully small on both twitter and facebook which is definitely true the moment they took away comments most of the community that were actually on there disappeared they were kind of said this comment about oh we're going to continue having our community talk and engage on twitter and facebook anybody that's been on twitter for a prolonged period of time know it's an absolute cesspool right it's not the best place for to, you to have a nuanced discussion about anything don't get me wrong comments on the website aren't the best either but there was an existing comment section that exists on ra just go on some of the old articles on ra from like 2005 onwards and look at some of the comments on some of the people com uh, commenting on some of the features uh, that have been made on there they're really insightful of course some snarky comments here and there but really meaningful debates concerning culture and what's going on are permanent there and without that the platform doesn't necessarily it ceased to basically exist right isn't it? So he continues here it says um yeah, the uh, engagement is worthily small on both face Twitter and Facebook. This is not a good sign of power for an online media company. Indeed, the only big engagement recently on your Facebook has been from your disgruntled club goers upset about your 30% hole being filled in the expense of actual creators of local community and culture. And there are also people talking about refunds. Agreed. The refund process is a bit, you know, a bit shaky. Please, can you explain why you perce perceived as such a big media company by the Arts Council with such low engagement numbers, which is definitely something that needs to be said. Without the community on the facebook on the prof on the website where is this engagement coming from where most people don't even go and check sites most people check things via instagram right or via social media platforms they don't actually go to a place to go and check some things so if that's the case and ra has initially been painted out as a kind of um, mouthpiece for certain labels to promote certain artists of course you can definitely see that reflected in some of the numbers that they get on the engagement now should that mean that your money that you get from a grant should be basically judged by the amount of clicks you get on an article probably not it should obviously kind of more mostly be weighted upon your cultural relevance and the amount of other people that are maybe because i would i would say that they are net positive and they probably would should deserve that 750,000 just because of the ticketing side of things and the event listing side i don't know who else replaces that functionality i'm not going on facebook to go and fucking look for events i fucking hate facebook as it is i had to make a i had to make one in order to kind of keep my um dj facebook page but i deleted it i hate it it's a shit platform you shouldn't be spending your time on there so for me to actually go on facebook to try and look for events is a waste of my complete time i don't want to be doing that ra at least provide that platform so if they're able to provide a platform for that people the world over i think seven fifty thousand is a fair enough uh grant price in order to kind of keep that functionality going it continues here he says if you would rather not answer the things in public then of course please hand it back and ask for it to be redistributed to either the djs and sound engineers fund or some other clubs that are not run by wealthy people who can easily dip into the pockets i guarantee this will make you the toast of the scene if you claim you are trying to save kind regards dave clark so again some decent points there being made a bit of a stretch in some ones i think overall the ra is a net positive it's done a lot more good for the scene than it has done bad it provided me with the opportunity to learn about this scene that i completely love it made me fall in love with certain clubs certain um subcultures certain labels certain artists i then decided to get involved myself and become a promoter set up my own kind of faux label um obviously pursue my own djing career put on various events go go on a whole techno tourism tour of most of the you know influential places within you know central eastern europe and stuff like it's obviously allowed me to open my horizons in that regard so it's definitely done a lot more good and has done bad but ra in its current iteration definitely has a lot to answer for some of the questions there are relevant some of them probably not so much but i think that was a good place to basically summarize that 